What's up, Rhodes? What's up? Happy Sunday? Yep. Sunday fun day? Is it nice outside? Very. Did you catch some fish last weekend? Yep. What'd you catch? Uh, bass. What kind of bass? Large bass. And? Yeah. Was it someone's PB? Oh yeah, and I caught my first little best bass. Yes. It's been a good week of fishing. I'll be honest, we didn't fish near as much this week as we have previous weeks. We had Clam Outdoors Pro Day on Thursday and Friday. You came to that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Did you see some cool new ice fishing stuff? Yep. Are you excited? Yep. What are we going to do after this video? Look for stuff. Look at ice fishing stuff in the middle of August. Yeah. Why not? So we got excited. We had Pro Day. This is where Clam Outdoors releases all of their new ice fishing stuff for the season. You might have saw it on Friday, two days ago. It is live on clamoutdoors.com right now. You can see all the new stuff for the upcoming ice fishing season, some of which you can buy right now. Some stuff still trickling in, but some of the cool stuff that you just saw on Friday released, you can actually buy right now and get ready for the ice fishing season. Now, let's stop talking about ice fishing for a little bit. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, we're going to jump back into open water fishing. You know, this last week, we did see water temperatures creep back up just a hair. When we talked to you a week ago, we saw them drop quite a bit. We had some cool mornings. We talked about 40s and 50s in the morning. We didn't see that much at all this week. We saw 60s, mid-60s, upper 60s to start every day. Uh, we're going to get into the 80s again today. We've been in the 80s. It looks like 80s uh, tomorrow, Tuesday. This coming week is the start of the Minnesota State Fair. Does that sound fun? Yep. We have a giant booth at the State Fair. I'll be there for opening day. You're going to see a lot of things happening at the State Fair. You can come down to the clam booth and see what's new. You can see the screen tents. You can see these ice fishing products we talked about. Minnesota State Fair starts this Thursday. We'll be setting up for that a couple days, and then I'll actually be there opening day from start to finish. Up on Machinery Hill, corner of Cooper and Lee, the clam booth. Come by. We'll talk fishing. Please come by. Say hi. I'd love to see you. As far as the fishing went this week, you caught your fish on a Ned rig. Yeah. And you caught your fish casting the opposite direction of where the weeds were yep. in the middle of nowhere. Yep. What made you think to do that? I mean, I was getting caught in the weeds a lot, so, and I just threw it back up off the boat. And... Brody, literally, we're fishing this way, clumps of weeds, what I would consider the juice. Brody's casting this way, kind of into the abyss, and he caught the two biggest bass with us the other day, including his personal bass. So something to be said about that. I'm going to investigate that pattern a little more. Free roamers, nomadic fish, chasing, I'm guessing, bluegills and crappies. You could see some schools of fish, pan, or panfish, prey, bait fish, and I'm guessing he just happened to intercept some of those big bass roaming through there. Otherwise, we've been really focusing on the weeds, outside weed lines, that sort of stuff. That still tends to be the pattern right now. We are still in full-blown summer patterns. I'll be on Minnetonka all day tomorrow, and I'll spend a bunch of time flipping, pitching, working weed lines, doing a number of things. I'll have a really good finger on the pulse. The Denny's is tomorrow. You got 36 teams competing on that lake, Lake Minnetonka, for their five biggest bass. We'll be doing that. Pay attention to the Denny's, the Denny's Legacy Series Facebook page tomorrow evening. You'll see who wins and, and what weight took to get there. As far as what we're using to catch these fish, uh, one bait that worked well. You heard Brody talk about the Ned Rig. We've talked about the Ned Rig a lot. You like fishing a Ned Rig? Yeah. Is it easy to fish? Yep. Does it work? Yep. Can anyone do it? Yep. If you're three, can you do it? Yep. If you're 93, could you do it? Yep. Okay, Ned Rig's pretty simple. Some of our big bites this week, though, came on a weedless worm presentation. We used the 8-inch mag worm from Mr. Twister right here. We also used a flipping out of various types of creature baits. But I'm going to show you, without busting anything, this worm we fish. So I'm using a 4-ounce worm or a 4-aught worm hook. I'm using a half-ounce tungsten weight on the end. You could use a 3 8 ounce. That would work just fine. I'm using a rubber stop, and I'm using an 8-inch mag buzzworm from Mr. Twister. I'm putting that through on a Texas rig. I'm just poking that worm into the hook there. I got a very, very versatile weedless presentation. With my clients, I'm putting it on a spinning rod. This is a seven foot medium action spinning rod. There's 20 pound braid, 12 pound fluorocarbon leader, and they can pitch this with a 3000 series Shimano anywhere they want. They can pitch this in five feet of water and cover. They can fish this in 20 feet of water in the coontail. They can do whatever they want with this presentation. 
it's very, 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 very versatile. So the weedless worm, the weedless creature bait, the weedless flipping bait, I understand a lot of us are taught and trained to use a bait casting setup for that, which honestly, myself, I would probably use, but I'm taking a lot of anglers fishing that don't fish as much, whether it's a guide client, whether it's maybe my son who maybe isn't gonna be throwing a bait caster with this setup as easily, this works exceptionally well on a spinning rod too. You can do a number of things with this and it's a very, very foolproof way of not getting snagged up. You heard Brody mention he threw the Ned rig that way because he was getting constantly snagged in the weeds that way. Now this is something where you could cast that way and not get snagged as much. What do you think? Tasty? Yeah. Would you eat that? Definitely. Brody said def definitely. Well, there you go. Take a bite, dude. So we're gonna chase down some more fish on the outside weed lines this week. We're gonna focus on slowing down a little bit. If you see a very isolated clump of weeds off of that weed line, generally speaking, there's a fishing right now, I'm telling you. Cruise down the weed line, everything looks uniform. The same, the same, the same, the same. A little bump of weeds 10 feet off the weed line. This is this tall, thick, gnarly looking thing. You can't even see through it with your forward facing sonar. I'm telling you nine times out of 10, that little clump of weeds off of the very similar non-exciting weed line is holding a fish or two or six we also saw a lot of fish on offshore structure offshore humps offshore gravel offshore rock offshore weeds it seems like a lot of fish are setting up out there and doing their thing another technique which we did a little bit a week ago was flipping mm -hmm. you like flipping yeah do you have your flipping rod over here you want to grab it show them what you're using so we got a flipping rod Brody's got his flipping stick. He's got a frog rod. He's got a number of things. All right, here. You tell him what you're doing here. So we're flipping, we're punching, whatever it might be. How do you like, and why do you like fishing that bait? I mean, so you just like flip into the weeds, the thick weeds, and then give it a bit of jig, and then you see a thump, boom. Boom, so this is a heavier presentation. You got a three quarter ounce or one ounce tungsten weight. You have a flipping hook. We're using the red line flipping hooks from BMC. This happens to be a craw tube that he was flipping. I'll use the flipping out from Mr. Twister. I'll even use a BA hog. There is a dozens and dozens of different really good flipping plastics. And this is something where, like you said, like Brody was telling you, you flip into heavy cover. Even the gnarliest, nastiest clump of weeds, this weight, weedless, will punch and plummet right through it, won't it? It's pretty amazing. You let that thing hit the water, and like Brody said, all you're doing is you're just kind of shaking that rod a little bit and you're stopping. And I promise you, if a fish is there, this is not too heavy. They'll come over and you can feel that bite, can't you? Definitely. Thump, and then what do you do? Reel That's up it. and you let her buck. He's got 40 pound braid on his setup. You can do 50, 65 pound braid. We have a fluorocarbon leader. We are tying direct here onto Brody's. Did it matter? Nope. It didn't matter. So anywhere in this heavy cover, you can definitely just tie direct to your braid. I get that question asked often. Now, if I'm fishing maybe a little cleaner water, more sporadic weed clumps, and maybe I'm flipping more milfoil than just heavy matted up everything, underneath the milfoil, it's it skinnies out, right? The fish can see a lot more. I might throw a 20-pound fluorocarbon leader on there of some type, but you can more than likely just flip with straight braid. Heavy action rod, good Shimano bait casting reel, buckle down that drag, and away you go. Yeah, I'll give you that back. That's your whooping stick. Yep. The fish don't stand a chance when that rod's in your hand. It's pretty much... If Brody's on a, got on a flipping binge and he puts that rod in his hand, it's pretty much game over. I just get out of the way. You just clean up everything, don't you? Guess you can say that. Guess you can say that. So another easy way to catch some fish is flipping. You can use a crankbait right now. You can use a wacky rig around docks. There's a lot of bass under the docks. We didn't target a lot of pike. We probably no. caught them by accident. Yeah. We didn't target a ton of walleye. There are some walleye schooling up on the weeds still, but a lot of them I think are offshore, not what I'm great at, something I wanna to continue to learn. We've been predominantly targeting bass this last week and probably this next week will be the same. We'll be targeting bass, maybe some panfish. We did catch some crappies. They're schooled up, easy to find in the weed lines. Some are in the deep weeds. Relatively speaking, they're deeper than 10 feet right now from what we've seen. Some as deep as 20, 25 feet. So the panfish are schooling up outside, especially the ones you wanna catch if you're looking to take home a meal. A lot of panfish and bluegills up shallow, but there are a lot of this. The nicer fish are gonna be on the outside weed line, in the weeds on the deeper side, or just roaming sporadically on the weed lines. Pretty easy to find. This week, we're gonna do everything we just talked about. Flip, probably use a spinning rod some with a Ned rig or a jig worm. 
Uh, maybe throw a crankbait, I'm not sure yet. Maybe throw a deep rock jig. I might get out that football jig from all terrain and throw that out deep and see what happens. Not sure. If you're going fishing tomorrow, what are you using, Brody? Probably starting off with the Ned Rig. Okay, Ned Rig. And then I'm gonna go ponds where they stick leaves. Okay. And probably end off with the wacky. Thing. Okay, under a dock. Yeah, flip under the dock. So Brody said if he's going fishing tomorrow, he's going to start off with a net rig or a spinning rod setup of some kind. He's probably going to flip or punch with what we just showed you. And then he's probably going to end skipping some docks with the wacky rig. Dude, I don't even know what else I should say because that pretty much nailed it. It's probably what we're going to do tomorrow. So get out there, have some fun, enjoy your week. Again, if you stop by the Minnesota State Fair, corner of Cooper and Lee up on Machinery Hill, come say hi to us, talk fishing, and we'll get ready for another awesome week and again stop out at clamoutdoors.com check out all the new ice fishing stuff check out blackfishgear.com get your sun shirt on it's going to be a warm week we got football tomorrow too don't we yep. busy week of football busy week of fishing our two favorite f's football and fishing yep. well maybe family first family. Uh, food okay there's all the things that start with f that we like so there we go have a great week enjoy yourselves be safe set some looks for us what do you think thanks brody yep.